In this video, we will show you how to replace your airbag clock spring assembly on this Chevy Tahoe. This will be located behind your steering wheel. Let's get into it. Okay friends, let's get started on our job. Make your way onto the hood and disconnect your negative battery terminal. We're doing this to prevent the airbag system from deploying. To do this, we'll use an eight millimeter wrench. At this point, you wanna wait approximately five minutes and then you can make your way into the passenger compartment and continue on. Now, once you've waited the five minutes, you can make your way inside the passenger compartment. Looking along the side of your steering wheel, you're going to find that you have a small hole. There's one of these on each side. This is an access hole and inside of there, there's a little tab that you're going to wanna to press on. So for this, I'll just use a small pick. Press this in along here and do the same on the other side. Now while pressing these in, we can remove the horn pad. Now with this pulled away, we have a close look at the back side. You can tell that you have two wires and each one of the connectors is colored differently. So you just wanna take note of which one goes where. Once you've done that, you can start disconnecting them. To disconnect them on each side of the connector, there's a small squeeze tab. Squeeze it in and gently pull it out of place. Give your electrical connectors a quick inspection. If you see any funny colors, that would be corrosion and it would need to be dealt with. Now we can set this aside. Now that we've disconnected these two wires, move along to your next wire connector, right up along here. On this, you'll find that you have a locking tab that you can gently get underneath, pry it up, and separate this. Quick inspection for corrosion. Set that aside. Follow the two red wires to this white connector. Take hold of it, press it in, and twist it counterclockwise. You should feel it unlock, and then you can pull it out. that. Now with the wiring disconnected, we want to make sure that we have the steering wheel aligned with the steering shaft. Take note of it. On our steering wheel, I can see that I have an arrow right up here and it lines up with the notch on the steering shaft. If yours does not have a marking, it's important to mark it. We'll use our 21 millimeter to remove this. Now that we have the steering nut off of there, start it back on just a couple threads. With this still loose, it's time to start removing the steering wheel from the steering shaft. To do this, you can use a steering wheel puller. If you don't necessarily have one of those, you can also grab onto the steering wheel by hand. We're going to give it a wiggle side to side and up and down, trying to break the steering wheel free from the steering shaft without damaging the steering wheel in any way. There we are. Go ahead and remove that nut again. Carefully remove the steering wheel, making sure that you allow the wiring to make its way through the lower hole. Set your steering wheel aside. At this point, we can move along to the tilt adjuster. For this, generally you just grab onto it and give it a little tug straight out and away. If it feels like it's stuck there, you can also use a trim tool. That should just latch in right down along this area. We can set this aside. Now we're going to separate the upper clamshell from the lower clamshell. There should be two mounting bolts, one up inside this hole and another one in this one. Ours are missing. We'll gently get in between this area and start to separate it. Do the same on the other side. Now we can start pulling down on the lower clamshell a little bit. Once you have the bottom down and out of the way, continue on to the upper clamshell. 
Just give that a little tug and lift it up and out of the way as well. Now let's continue looking in the center area here, where the steering shaft comes up through the clock spring assembly. You're going to find that you have a snap ring holding this in place. To remove this snap ring, use some snap ring pliers. You can tell they have the small little tips on them and they fit directly into each of these holes. Get this on here, spread that snap ring and remove it. There's that. Give it a close inspection, make sure it is still reusable, and set it aside. Let's take hold of this unit and carefully pull it away. Keep in mind there is wiring leading to the bottom of it. Now let's continue on to the lower wiring harness. For this, we'll be using a small pocket screwdriver. You can also use a pick. We're going to get in between this area and gently start to separate it. As you start to separate it along here, you're going to continue on along the body of the clock spring assembly. Now with that separated, we can take hold of this and we'll start pulling it out of position. Now with that popped out of place, continue on with your small screwdriver or small pick. Looking along each of these connectors, you're going to find that you have an orange locking tab. Gently get in between this area and separate it. place. Now that we have the orange lock off of there, go ahead and grab onto the ribbon and the electrical connector and carefully separate them. Just pull that right off. Now that we've done one, we'll do the exact same thing to the other one. Now that we have that separated, we're ready for the installation of our brand new clock spring. Before you start connecting anything, give it a quick rotation. Along this area, you're going to find a color code and that should match up with your wiring harnesses. So you just wanna take these and slide them into position. While doing so, if you were looking at the wiring harness itself, right where my index finger is, you can tell that there's a small locking tab that protrudes up and out. And on the other side, there isn't one. Looking on the clock spring itself, you can tell it has a small notch for that locking tab to lock into. So with that said, we'll take each of these wires and slowly push them into position. Just press that all the way in. Once you feel as though you have one attached, go ahead and give it a little wiggle. Make sure it's completely secured in position. You do not want these falling out while you're driving down the road. Let's do the same to the other one now. Once again, with that locking tab facing into this area. Press that into the locked position, give it a wiggle as well. Once you're sure that both of these are secured, continue on with this piece. We're going to take this and put it along the back side. You'll notice that you have these three little ears that are supposed to fit up along in between the wires. Let's get this aligned. Now I can turn this over. Continue on with your three mounting screws. Start that in there. We'll make sure we start in all three of the mounting screws before we fully tighten any of them. All right, 
Let's snug them up. Make sure everything's completely secured. Now we can get the clock spring in position. Make sure you align the steering shaft hole with the steering shaft. Then you also have the smaller hole, which should line up with this area as well. Let's start bringing this into position. We'll press it in there. Listen for a click. Now let's move along to that snap ring. We'll start that onto the snap ring pliers and gently start pressing this over the steering shaft into the proper position. Double check to make sure it's completely seated all the way around. That looks good. Now we can grab onto this little orange ear, give it a tug, and what you're going to find is that it breaks off fairly easily. That orange piece is supposed to stay inside of here. That's okay. Now we can start putting our two pieces of the steering column trim panel together. Let's take the top portion and press this down into the locked position. The next thing we'll do is continue on with the lower portion. As we swing this up, you wanna make sure that the locking tabs align and everything fits flush once it's together. There we are. If you have those two lower mounting bolts, go ahead and install those now. Reinstall your tilt lever. Let's move along to reattaching the steering wheel. To do this, we're gonna take the wiring and slide it right through the lower rectangular hole. Just bring that right through. Now we can start aligning the steering wheel with the steering shaft. You want to make sure you pay attention to those markings that I had spoke to you about before. Slide that right on there. If this is off by even one tooth while you're driving, the steering wheel will be off kilter. Install your 21 millimeter nut, snug it up, and then torque that to 29 foot-pounds. Now we can attach the horn switch. We'll take this, put it into the corresponding hole, line it up, press it in, and turn it clockwise to lock it in proper position. Make sure that's completely secured in place. Tuck the wiring in here. Let's continue on with our electrical connector. Listen for a click, give it a tug to make sure that's completely secure. Now we can install the airbag unit, have a look at the back side. You've got a pink area here and a white one. We'll take the pink wire and connect it to the pink connector. Listen for a click. Do the same to this one. Now we can take this and put it in position, paying attention to each one of our alignment studs and the holes on the steering wheel itself. We'll align those and press this in. Listen for a click from both sides and give it a little tug to make sure it is secured in place. It should wobble around a little bit because this is also part of the horn switch. Now we can make our way back under the hood and reconnect the negative battery terminal. Use your eight millimeter and make sure it's nice and snug. Now, once you have the battery reconnected, it's time to test everything's functionality. Let's test the horn first. Continue on with the key. 
At this point, you can either put the key in the on position or even start the vehicle. We're paying attention to the dash and making sure that there is no airbag light that stays on. Put the key in the on position here. I get a couple flashes from the airbag light, which is good. And then it turns off. Perfect. Thanks for watching. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.